So when we look at this whole idea about the Bible, as I've been studying, uh, the Jews and Christians are in total opposition as it relates to the Messiah. And so as I'm continuing to study, to try to understand their whole rejection of Jesus altogether, uh, trying to wrap my mind around how, of course, my mind goes to Romans chapter one, where Paul goes into depth about how God has revealed Jesus, Jesus's whole purpose, and how there was this, this, this knowledge of God and what he was doing and people were still refusing to accept what God was doing through Jesus. And so we look at this whole idea, this whole picture of Jews rejecting Jesus because he is not the promised Messiah. He did not fulfill um, the prophecies of, oh, he could not have been the seed of David. There is no way possible that Jews can worship a deity or another Jew, if you will. Um, their claims is that all of this is Greek or Roman myth. And so when we think about all of that and we think about the scriptures, and I think this is important because there is much confusion where people are afraid to believe in Jesus because of these claims you have Jews who are angry at Christians because they feel that Christians are the reason for much of their persecution I would like to say that Christians are persecuted just as well um, but I like to take this back to Genesis we know that God the creator God, the sovereign God. We know that he's sovereign and he's holy. And so when we look at the garden account where God told them not to, and we know that they did. And he said, the day that you eat, you shall surely die. So we know that story. And we know how Adam and Eve were evicted. Um, we know that they tried to cover their own sin and God would not allow them. And so he took the animal of a skin of the skin of an animal, I'm sorry, to cover them. And he made a uh, promise to Eve, if you will, about her seed. God had a plan all the time to redeem mankind back to himself. And so, you know, fast forward, we know that God called Abraham, who was an idol worshiper. Okay. So when he called the first father of faith, he was an idol worshiper in Mesopotamia, Babylon, Ur of the Chaldeans. And he called him. And we know that before God ever gave Moses, I'm sorry, Abraham, any laws he called him and Abraham heeded he obeyed God by faith no law no circumcision Paul talks about that as well over in Romans so Abraham was considered righteousness or it was accredited to him because of his obedience God said come from out amongst your people go and I will show you. And Abraham obeyed. God tells him to sacrifice his son. Abraham obeys. God steps in. And we know the promise, the covenant that God made with Abraham about a people, a place. There was that, that was the promise, a people and a place. And there is this constant thread of this seed. You see that throughout the scriptures, a promise of this seed that is to come. And if we fast forward, we were given the law, they were given the law um, through Moses. And what the law did 
for some, it pumped them up. It made them feel proudful. Yet they were never able to keep it. They kept breaking God's law over and over again, so much so that it kept sending them into exile because of their disobedience. Okay, this was before Christians came. Because of their disobedience, God kept allowing other nations, other empires, other rulers to come in and overtake them. And so, because they could not keep the law. The law exposed their sin. Okay. And then, of course, we got King David, who was a sinner as well. Um, he got the promise that there would be a seed from his kingdom that would rule for eternity. And we know that throughout history, throughout the Old Testament, no one fulfilled that. And this seed that God is talking about, he's specific as to what this seed is going to accomplish. We got the prophets and many of the Jews say, you know, that, um, uh, Jesus didn't fulfill those prophecies that he was just like all of the other false prophets. So they reject him for many other reasons that I cannot just go through in this one particular video. But to go back and take all of this, because the first man, Adam, sinned, God cannot let sin go. He cannot wink at it. He, he, he cannot. He will not. He's sovereign. He's holy. He's majestic. He's supreme. And so when we think about that, and as I'm studying this, I can't help but wonder how the Jews are waiting for a Messiah that they say, according to their, to their Bible, that's, that's what they say. This is their Bible. Um, they say the New Testament is the Christian Bible and the Old Testament is their Bible. But I can't help but wonder how one can expect a human being like us to fulfill what the Bible says that the seed, Eve's seed, what will happen with Eve's seed, Genesis 3, how we believe that a human being like us is going to accomplish that. I do not see that in the Messiah, according to the description that they give. I cannot see that in the Messiah that the Jews are referencing. I, I cannot see that. Um, and I could be wrong, but according to the scripture, the totality of the scriptures, I cannot see a human being accomplishing what the seed that God mentioned in Genesis 3, a human being fulfilling that. And so I believe what the scripture says about Jesus. I believe that Jesus did not fulfill all of the prophecy in his first coming. And I believe he is going to return again to complete what he started. Because, and I believe that's supernatural, um, because only God can make it happen. No, no human being, uh, like you and I, which is what the Messiah that the Jews are looking for, uh, that's what they're hoping that he will do. They're hoping that he will do physical, um, uh, rest restoration or rescuing them but the question has to be asked how will that messiah that they're waiting on reconcile sinful mankind to a holy god that's the question that i think we need to wrestle with because the sin has to be dealt with because god had them god instituted the commandments first of all for a reason before y'all go into the promised land, I need y'all to 
to know how I want you all to conduct yourself because the others around you, the other nations around you are polytheistic. They are idol worshipers and I need you all to be the example, right? Um, and so I need you all to understand the sincerity of sin, of your sin and why this is important. And so he gives them these commandments and then he institutes the altar and the sacrifices and all of that. And so even now they can't do those sacrifices. So what is the atonement? What is the final atonement going to be for their sin? That's the question um, that I have. Because if Adam and Eve were kicked out, because of their sin, their disobedience to a holy God whom they had relationship with. Um, and then the law reveals mankind's sin. The animals were, they had to do this perpetually. Like they had to do this year round. This wasn't a one-time thing. And the sacrifices, the animal sacrifices were never meant to remove. It was just a temporary covering to deal with the sin. Because when the priest laid his hand on the animal, that was a transferring from the people to the sinful people to the innocent, innocent animal. So, and that's Old Testament. So how are we rationalizing that with the Messiah that the Jews are waiting on? So I want to leave this. I want to leave this in your hands. You go study. You read it. Uh, you're going to have to wrestle with the text, though. You're going to have to wrestle with it because on the one end, you got Jews against Christians, and that's not what God meant. And so that's why Paul would go on to further tell us, not that the church or Christians have replaced the Jews. We have not. If you've been thinking that, you're wrong in your thinking. God wants the Jews to, rec excuse me, to recognize the Messiah that he has sent, and that Jesus indeed is not a false Messiah. There have been many false messiahs None of them accomplished anything that Jesus accomplished. None. And so I want to leave you to wrestle with that, to dig into the text, to sit with God. Just sit with him. Uh, that's what I've been doing these last couple of weeks, just sitting with him and up in the middle of the night, just spending time with him because I believe that this is important people's salvation their eternity hangs on this because the 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 the, the crux of our Christian faith is faith in Jesus Christ that he is the son of God that he was crucified on the cross that he died and he was buried and he rose on the third day and that he will return again as king, as ruler, and he will deal with everything then. Because he did not come the first time to judge. He came to give his life. But he will come a second time to judge those who have rejected him. And that's why it's important for us as Christians to make sure that we know this so that we can share this because not only Jews, but anybody who is unsaved need to hear this message. And so this is not something that we can just skate over, you know, or around. We need to know this and we need to um, be able to hang our hats on it. And so just wanted to share, this is what I've been dealing with here. And uh, I don't know if anybody else thinks about things like this. But, uh, yeah, 
to know that two of the uh, largest religions, if you will, in the world are at odds about the Messiah. Um, that's something to give some serious thought about. And so, yeah, would love to know your thoughts. Um, preferably you got some scripture um, to back it up because as a Christian, the Bible is the final authority um, for us. And so opinion really doesn't matter, but our thoughts based on what the scriptures say, it's what's going to uh, hold and that's going to be able to stand against, you know, man's opinions and how we feel. Um, Cause this is not about a feeling. This is about facts. What's in God's word and what his word really meant. So I pray that this has blessed you again. If you watch the end to the end of this video, I would love for you to like subscribe and share, uh, so that you don't miss when I post the next video. Till next time, bye-bye.